All right, so I'm gonna go over this uh, water rig, uh, a tractor rig sort of set up in real flow uh, with the script and all that, and I'll be uploading the scene file and the um, and the script to my site so you can um, you know tear it apart, grab it, use it for whatever you want. Uh, this is the basic um, the basic setup. I've had different kind of setups that are a little more elaborate uh, with more tractors, and I've even had like a forced uh, scripted force daemon. Uh, that's a lot more complicated and uh, weird to kind of go over. So um, this is the base level of this, and it, it'll definitely get you going to what you need to do. I um, uh, kind of came up with this idea when I was on Bioshock at Blur, and we needed to do a, um, a vortex of water going around the hero character. And uh, the despline just wasn't really working, so it's kind of came up with a scripted idea. And it's really, really simple. Um, I think the whole thing, the core of the code is something like eight lines or something. Um, it, it's, it's really nothing uh, complicated at all. Um, so I'm going to go over the, uh, the setup of this real quick. I'm not going to recreate this, but just kind of go through it and uh, show you how it works. And um, yeah, so let's go and get started. Um, and this is the final kind of product here. And if I were to let this keep simming, as you can see, it'll just kind of keep going around in a circle. Um, or I guess it's more of a triangle. It's at three points, but yeah. Um, all right, so uh, what I did here is I made a, my mission here. It's a circle emitter. I uh, named it EMR, uh, you know, or red. Uh, EM, there's an EMG and an EMB. These two guys are not circle emitters. They are um, containers. Uh, usually you use these with the filter daemon, but um, I didn't use a filter daemon in this because I had some trouble getting the um, uh, the particle um, position uh, module out, and I'll explain what that kind of means in a minute. But you know, basically all three axes of the particle position uh, and the and this position of this into that filter daemon. So um, I just ended up scripting it and. I believe when I came up with this idea of the filter daemon was uh, either non-existent or really buggy. So I just kind of kept with this with this um, solution. And if you have something better that works, uh, I would love to see it, and that'd be awesome. But um, so uh, I have this emission guy here, circle guy, just shooting up, um, and his speed is on, on a a. a expression here so it's uh, you know if frame is greater than 30 speed is zero otherwise two um, if you don't know how to use the expressions don't worry about it it's just something I did really quickly to show you like a little blob of water uh, and you don't have to have an expression there it's just something to show you that it kind of goes around in a circle um, so yeah and we have these two other guys uh, the G and B um, they're exactly the same settings as the R in fact, they all need to be the same settings. Uh, resolution, especially. Uh, you could probably change the internal pressure of one it, or two and see how it works. Maybe even the surface tension. That might be fun to see. But um, most, for the most part, I just keep the settings of all three of these exactly the same. Uh, and there's no need to, to change it because usually it kind of blows up on you. Um, and I made three nulls and three tractors. And these kind of go hand in hand. Um, probably wondering uh, why I made the nulls. Uh, it's so I could grab the position of where the tractors are. Um, I, th I think you can grab the position of the tractors in the script, but I ended up doing it with the null just because um, it's just easier to see when you, when you had a bunch of these guys in the, in the scene. I just had these nulls, these little crosses rather than these little attractors and it's just easier to to navigate around and stuff and you can you know if you wanted to go to your attractors and uh, you know turn them off and just have these nulls I'll turn these back on for now um, and the attractors all the same force for now you can have one stronger than another uh, for different stuff um, mine right now is at 10 um, drag force Pretty strong, 0.5. This is uh, kind of in a correlation of what the, what the strength is here. Um, if you don't have the drag force, um, it'll kind of fly off, and I can actually probably show you that really quickly. We can just take this drag force down to, like, say, uh, 
just say zero for now. Shut the sim, sim it out. And you'll see it's shooting up. In fact, you'll see it's splitting because it's not uh, part of the particles are going inside to where the bubble or where these are catching and these aren't. Sometimes this can make for a really cool effect and you can do some neat stuff like this too. Um, but I wanted all these particles to go around now if I were to say put this back to 2.25. Uh, this will slow the particles down and their speed so they all kind of catch up with each other and then go back down and around and we'll see again see now these miss too so you have to kind of dial in where um, where that drag force is and you, again you can get some kind of cool stuff like this though um, and they'll kind of catch up eventually um, so I usually I think my rule of thumb was kind of like um, I think I had this like drag force at like half of whatever or for, I think it's like half or something like let me see I usually it's like this is like this is 0.5 and these attractors are 10 so yeah it, it's somewhere like that so it's like you know 0.5 to 0 0.10 whatever, whatever the math is behind that so um, that's what I kind of found the sweet spot to be. You could go a little less or whatever to kind of get a better, a better, different look to whatever you need to. But um, that's kind of what I came up with. Um, so the uh, these three minute uh, and exclusive links. When you when you if you do make a scene, make sure you don't get any of the global links. Um, and this is how this exclusive links kind of works. So we have the uh, red particles going to the first attractor. Uh, the green particles, of course, going to the second attractor, and the um, blue particles going to the third attractor. And these turn back into red and go back to the first attractor, so it's kind of an infinite loop. Uh, so we'll go ahead and show you how that script works now. Um, go ahead and press Control F2 to get to this, the events, the simulation events. There's a couple different places you can put this. You can put this in the master under simulation step here, or just right click on uh, steps pre and add script. <clears throat> and usually this is what I end up doing. Uh, and just pop the script into here um, and do what you need to do. Uh, so uh, I use a, uh, a text editor called uh, Crimson Editor. You can copy and paste. Usually I do all my editing in an external text editor because <clears throat> Uh, Real flows editor is a little bit weird and wonky, and I'm, it's hard to tell where the tabbing and Python is in here. So, um, so this is a script. Uh, it's, see, it's it's actually not that much stuff at all. It's kind of the same thing over and over and over again. So, um, if you don't know anything about scripting, it's probably best to kind of go over like the simple scripting tutorials I have I think online somewhere or just read the help the help is pretty useful but I'll go over all the stuff um, so right here I'm basically just getting the red uh, my red emitter here the G and I'm also getting <coughs> my blue emitter storing those into variables uh, now I'm getting the and the inf R I'm not even sure why I named this inf but whatever um, you know the null positions so, or I'm getting the objects you have to get the objects and then you can get the positions or any sort of parameters you want to off this so now I'm getting the um, uh, you know null one two and three positions here and then I'm going through and grabbing all the particles for each for each emitter <clears throat> so I can do go through a for loop and then um, you know do whatever I want to apply forces and all that good stuff and this is the radius. This is the bubble, uh, how big this bubble is around um, around each null. Um, and it's in units in, in real flow, so it's one square in, uh, in real flow. So this, uh, this script is, um, I mean, it's, you know, here it is right here. This is the whole thing that does all the work. Um, but we really only need to look at one section of this to, to understand how this works. Um, so we're going to a for loop here into the red particles, what we got here, All right there. And so I'm grabbing the position, <clears throat> putting them in a variable, grabbing the velocity, putting them in a variable, um, grabbing the length uh, between 
the uh, the particle and the um, the null here. So I'm just taking you know from the distance between here and here, and then I'm putting that into uh, into a, a variable, and then I'm using uh, I'm going to then declare another variable here, which is the magnitude of this um, or the module we call I guess in Python of the position. So x, y, and z combined coordinates <clears throat> here of the length. So that way I can just compare it to uh, my radius up here. So if this AP dist is less than or greater or equal to, or yeah, less than or equals to a radius, then uh, emit g. So we're, we're saying uh, uh, our green particles, we're going to add the green particles. And then we're also going to remove the red particles. So as you can see that happening here, it's just switching in to, to that area wherever that bubble is at. So, and if you wanted to, it doesn't have to be a clean a line. Um, I've done some stuff where it's actual like random, a random radius, uh, and you just need to. I'm not going to go over that in this, but you can have a little bit. Uh, more randomized value if you want. Um, uh, I haven't really had any use for that so much because if you were to select these three guys, you can kind of see where they switch over, but in rendering, there's no difference at all. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, and that's that is the, this is it. This is that that's the entire script. So then what I did is just copy this uh, and pasted this, you know, two other times, replaced the, we're going through the green particles now, doing the same thing, but at the end what we're doing is we're going to emit the blue particles and then uh, remove the green particles. So right there, it's kind of the same thing. And then at the very end, of course, doing the same thing to the blue particles, except what we're going to do is re-add the red particles so they'll be attracted back to here again and then remove the blue particles so that way it kind of goes in that infinite sort of loop uh, and then it just kind of keeps going over and over and over and over again um, so yeah that's that's pretty much it you can add as many emitters as you want it's pretty much copy and pasting these four loops I'm sure there's a lot better <clears throat> way of um, maybe <laughs> programming this in uh, it's not that slow, but I guess it's you know it's single thread since it's a, um, a script. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is it. And if you have any questions or whatnot, just give me a holler at my email, and uh, I'll have this on my website. And you can see it in the description in the video. Uh, so enjoy.